was a fantastic meal. Oh. Well, the pleasure was all ours, Albert, really. <laughs> no, it was Luigi's, actually, so let's get a move on. Well, the rest of the day is yours, Albert. What would you like to do? Your wish is our command. Well, how about the first flight to Vegas? Well, we thought maybe bungee jumping over the Thames. Yeah, or go-karting. Oh, I'll whop your ass, you young whippersnapper. <laughs> well, you probably would, actually. Ah, let me see. I know what, I'm feeling nostalgic. How about a snifter at the Royal Mayfair Club? That's where I roped my first mark. Sounds good to me. It's a huge domed atrium filled with natural light. But more importantly, it has the best choice of brandies this side of Paris. Let's do it. I see what you mean about a natural light. an iconic building, a monument to Anglo-American relations. Roped some of my biggest marks there ever. <laughs> the sold son of a bitch who pulled it down should be strung up. Better yeah, still, Albert. Let's see him where it really hurts, huh? Agreed. So who is he? Well, it turns out the Starfire property holdings is owned by none other than Dale Ridley. Dale who? Ridley, you know, uh... Ding dong, that's my song. Uh, I think it's time we took your pill, mate. I never mind. They're too young. All oh, right, well, you know, back in the day, the late 80s, he was game show gold. Big air, big teeth, more cheese than a cheddar gorge. Take a butcher to this. Albert. <sighs> it's Friday, and it's live from London City Studios. It's the greatest game show on earth. Ding dong, that's my song. Tonight's fabulous prizes include a personal stereo, an electronic typewriter, and a luxury caravan holiday for four. And he's your host, Dale Ridley. So, Julia. Tell me about yourself. <laughs> this is painful. Oh, dear. Was it? Hi. I would jump. P. Uh -huh. <laughs> or C. Gronsky boot. <laughs> oh! Do you know? That's my song! Ding dong, that's my song. Excruciating, I know. So what happened to Ridley? Well, fame and fortune went to his head. He reckoned he was a saviour of commercial TV. He started trying to push him around, making petty demands when it was time for a new contract. What finished him was a big TV charity night. London City Studios got him on tape, demanding 20% of whatever the charity made in return for hosting it. Next morning, it was all over the papers, and that was that. Network fried him on the spot. No one else would touch him. What did he do next? Well, he crawled back to his Birmingham mansion and hid. Five years later, he re-emerged as a property entrepreneur. First thing he did was buy an old folks' home. The moment he had his hands on it, he shut it down, turfed out 35 OAPs, and then brought in the bulldozers. A month later, he sold it to a developer for twice what he paid for it. So he stuck at it, only this time on a much bigger scale. Victorian warehouses, factories, historic mills, all in great locations, bought at knockdown prices, often before they'd even come onto the market. How? Huh. Or backhanders to local councillors, agents, consultants. They made sure the sales were completed before anyone else got looking. So how come no one's cottoned onto the bribery? Well, it looks like they did. He upset rival developers, councils, and heritage groups from Leicester to Ludlow. That's when he started buying property in London. Where's he based? Well, right now he's staying at the Union House Hotel. Well, it just so happens I play poker with the concierge there. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> how long's he in town? Well, less than a week. Okay, then, no time to lose. Let's get out there and find a way in. Ding dong. Hi, oh. ladies. 
Ding dong. That's my song. Hey. Uh, Bloody tourist. <laughs> hey. Hello, sir. Two theatre tickets tonight. Decent seats. Nothing too intellectual. Sorted, yeah? Have you been in touch with the heritage people yet? I'm waiting for the call back. Make sure you deal with a man. Why? Women have scruples. Bad for business. Right. Take him to a fancy restaurant, fill him full of vodka, take him to a titty bar, and then hit him with the money. Oh, right, OK. It's only my old boss always used to say, never mix business with pleasure. <laughs> really? Let me ask you this, Gibbs. How big was his yacht? I don't think he had one. Really? How many Ferraris in his garage? He didn't. No? Surprise, surprise. You start to get the picture. There are no boundaries between business and pleasure. Right, OK, I get it. So, if you enjoy what you do, it's all pleasure. Now, you thicko. Rule one, it's all business. Stick around, kid. Learn from the master. What was it? The National Victorian Library. It should burn well, then. I saved money on the bulldozers. How big's the site? Square feet? Just under 8,000. Too small. I want scale, I want impressive. What, bigger than this? There's barely room to swing a heritage commissioner in there. Think premiership, not conference. But it's difficult in London, but there's a lot more competition. Rule one. Do not be afraid of competition. Nobody wants to win a one-horse race. I thought rule one was... Shut it! Come on. So, what have we got? Well, you're right about how he does his business. He pays off agents, council officials, heritage commissioners to make sure the deal goes his way, and always for the right price. In fact, his motto is, Everybody has their price. Ah. Well, why hasn't he been prosecuted? Well, he never does a dirty deed himself. He always leaves it to one of his apprentices. Three of his employees have done time in the last five years. What, they never squeal? Almost certainly, and Ridley's smart enough never to leave a trail. What about his corporate structure? He runs all his projects through Starfire Property Holdings, but he creams off all the profits into offshore accounts to avoid paying tax. So how big is his operation? Well, it's difficult to get exact figures, but I'd say he's doing about eight deals a year, three to five million pounds each. He's got his eyes set on bigger opportunities here in London. So we need to find something that'll float his boat. A tasty little deal somewhere. What about a tasty big deal? Seems London City Studios are up for sale. That's a bit out of his league, isn't it? Exactly. So that means he'll need partners. Well, he's gonna love this, isn't he, hey? The smell of easy money, the cutest of the big deal, and the icing on the cake revenge he gets to be involved in tearing down the studio. What a sweet little plan, Michael. And the best bit is the bidding's about to close. Excuse me, do you know where I can find free sock to Melbourne? Who wants to know? Which one of you uses free sock to Morgan? You don't remember me, do you? Uh, nah. Should I? <laughs> Relax, you're not my dad or anything weird like that. Oh, lucky for you. The thought never crossed my mind. So who are you, Ken? It's me. Alfie Beezer. Your godson? Of course you are. <laughs> yeah, the eyes. Where's your dad? Well, he's at the airport. Hey. Oh. Dear Ash, sorry to do this to you, but I need you to look after the kid for a few days. I had to get on a plane to Amsterdam to salvage a big score. The kid's nan's in Spain and I was stuck, so I thought it was time you did your godfatherly thing. I owe you big time, love, Beezer. P.S. Watch the kid. He's a slippery sod. Oh, the last bit's a lie. If I do this, you've got to choose a card, remember it, and if I guess it, give me a pound claim. Yeah, all right, yeah. Was it the Ace of Hearts? 
Oh, blimey. How did he do that? Here. Johnny Beezer was a roper I worked with back in the 90s. He got his bird up the duff and, hey presto, along comes little Alfie there. So me and Beezer are down a few pints to celebrate, eight pints in, he asked me to be godfather. What could I say? Probably not a lot after eight pints. <laughs> well, that was the last time I saw him. How come? Because the next day Beezer found out that uh, Alfie's mum was having her way with her gynae. What, while she was...? Well, he used to be done. <laughs> anyway, Beezer takes Alfie back to Manchester to live with his nan. I haven't seen him since. Well, look, we can't work a con while we're looking after a kid. What if we took it in turns to look after him? I don't know. The kid could be a complete liability. I won't be. I promise. Hey, you should be in bed. Maybe I can help. Yeah, you can help by going back to bed. I've worked on Dad's cons loads of times. I won't be any trouble. I promise. Well, it's not what your dad said. Well, he was joking. Oh, please. Well, we've all got to start somewhere. All right, maybe he could just help out behind the scenes back here. Your responsibility. Why mine? Because you were the first to crack. Mm. Fine. OK, kid, it's agreed. You're in. Yes! Let's get started. I thought I was going to get to do something. Oh, stop complaining. You said you wanted a burger and you've had one. You said I was going to be involved in a con. You will be. Doing what? I don't know yet. All right, just something back in the apartment. That sounds boring. Why can't I be the roper? Because Albert's the roper and you're only 11. That can be an advantage sometimes. No one just specs an 11-year-old. They would if they met you. Look, if you don't want me to do anything, I'll just watch. Alfie, can we stop talking? Just for five minutes. All right? Ash, do you want to see a trick? What? Hold this on my ear. Yes, all right, go on then. I'm exhausted. I've done the London Eye and he's had some food, so now we're on our way back, OK? Hey, you you woke up. Literally. Yeah, yeah, he's got all of the questions. I can't answer them. I'm coming home. Excuse me. Uh, please hold this for me. All right. Cheers. I want the next flight home. They can't exclude us from the sale just because we're Americans. Well, not officially they can, but at the end of the day, if the chairman's got some kind of grudge against Americans, there's not a whole hell of a lot we can do about it. You found that out just now? In 24 hours, the bidding closes. I only found out because their consultants told me an hour ago the chairman was cleaned out by his American ex-wife. Look, Henry, come on, we can't win them all. Let me set you straight, Strickland. I never lose. As soon as I get to Boston, I'm going to contact my lawyers and have them start legal proceedings against London City Studios. I want that site. Yeah, OK. Good. Wait here. I'm Henry Selworth checking out. I'd like some information on our American friends. Mandel at two o'clock. Idiots International. Keep going. A little busy right now, kid. Whoa, was that the mark? Uh, Mickey, I'm sorry. He just slipped away. Do we have a problem? I don't think so. OK. <laughs> that was uh, really funny. I just wanted to help. Yeah, well, you pull something like that again and you're in big trouble, mister. Get over. See you in Boston. OK. This is incredible. What? Oh. You know the London City Studios? Yeah, it's off for sale. Exactly. And it's out of our price range by a factor of 10. Was. Eh? Hey? I'll explain in the lift. Just have to be in the right place at the right time. This could be sweet. Here we are. Helios International Property Investments. Started in 1982. Boston, 
3.4 billion portfolio in the US, Canada and Europe. Serious players, then. There's one of them. Henry Selworth, chairman. And there's the other one, Brett Strickland, head of acquisitions, Western Europe. London City Studios is perfect for them. Big site, central location. Just demolish what's there and stick up one of their shopping centres. Yeah, but they can't get it. Because the chairman's got a grudge against Yanks. So what are you thinking, boss? We front the bid for them. Why not? Surely they could deal with any property company in the UK. Not when the bidding closes in 24 hours, they can't. That's why they've thrown in the towel. We better catch them before they get on a plane. Just try to look intelligent. Mr. Strickland. Yes. Sorry for interrupting. My name's Dow Ridley. I'm the chairman and chief executive of Starfire Property Holdings. And this is my apprentice, Mr. Gibbs. Hi. OK, so how do you guys know my name? I'm a big fan. I like to think of Helios International as a role model for, for my company. <laughs> That's great to hear, Mr. Uh, Ridley. Ridley, but um, if you'll excuse me, I'm on my way to the airport. Give me two minutes and I will give you a game-changing opportunity. OK, well, I'm all ears until my cab arrives. <sighs> London City Studios. I think we can help. How? Your bid has hit the buffers because Helios is an American company, correct? I'm sorry, but how do you know all this? Information is everything. OK, so what exactly do you want? We're a UK company, specialising in land and property acquisitions. In short, Mr Strickland, we confront your bid. Why not just bid yourself? Simple. Don't have access to that level of funding. <laughs> OK, I see. Look, uh, I admire your opportunism, but the idea that a £100 million deal can be secured on the basis of a two-minute conversation with a perfect stranger a day before the bidding closes is frankly laughable. <laughs> Seize the moment and seize the deal. That's my motto, Mr. Strickland. Or one of them, anyway. I am offering you the chance to save this deal and to enhance your standing within your company. OK. Let's say I go for this opportunity of yours. What do you get out of it? 10% of the bid price. 10%? <laughs> I'm sorry, I have a flight to catch. Think about it. Call me. Well, I suppose it was worth a shot. Trust me, he'll ring. So what's my fee going to be? Uh, what fee is that, then? For the con. So I was part of the team. No, 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 no. You see... Now, your fee, right, is learning, you know, from us. It's worth more than money, that is. Oh, OK. Tell you what, if I can trick you out of some of the money you make from the com, can I keep it? Hang on, hang on, let me get this straight. If you can trick me out of some of the money, assuming we get it, that is, I'll let you keep it. Yeah. What's the problem? You scared the great Free Socks Morgan's going to be outspired by an 11-year-old? No, 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 no. I just don't want to crush your confidence, you cheeky sod. Deal? Right. Yeah, all right, deal. <laughs> so how are we going to get him into the studios? From what I've heard, the place is like Fort Knox. Why not? How uh, come? Well, he doesn't need to go there. He just needs to do the presentation to you. How are you getting on with the offices? Well, i better rethink. Oh? Yeah, the name of the London City Studios property developers is already out there, Weinstein de Vere. They're a big company with swanky West End offices. So we have to assume that Ridley at least knows of them. We can't risk faking it. So, what were you thinking? Well, we get Ridley to do the presentation at Weinstein de Vere. What, in their actual offices? Yeah, in the ballroom. Yeah, obviously. As my dad always says, can't have much more convincing than the real thing. Is the shark with you? Nah, he's been following me since I left the aquarium. 
So are you going to pull this one off, Uncle Ash? Yeah, how are you going to pull this one off, Uncle Ash? Well, you know, I'm, um... I'm working on it, innit? I think it's time to put our friend out of his misery. <laughs> ah, Mr Ridley, Brett Strickland. No, no, actually, my flight's been delayed. But perhaps we should meet. Yeah. Yeah, that works for me. OK. I've spoken to Mr Selworth about your proposal, and he's interested, but we would need to move fast. You have to meet with Weinstein De Vere, the property consultants handling the sealed bids. No problem. We can arrange a meeting for tomorrow. How much are you proposing to bid? A hundred million. Any flexibility in that? We want the building, and our analysts believe that a hundred million should swing it. Let's hope they're right. So the only outstanding issue is your fee. Ten percent is completely out of the question. So what are you thinking? A flat million. That will barely cover my costs. Plus, we are talking about your reputation. Picture the scene. You, arriving back in Boston, with a $100 million contract in your pocket that you've salvaged by using your intuitive brilliance and relentless determination on behalf of Helios International. It's got to be worth five million of anybody's money, surely. Two. Three. 2.5. Done. Good. You'll front the bid on behalf of your company. If you win, we will put up the money and you will pass full ownership of the building over to us in exchange for 2.5 million pounds. Do we have a deal? There's one more thing I need. I'm done negotiating, Mr. Ridley. Oh, I'm sure you'll be OK with this. I'm assuming you'll be demolishing and building from scratch. Of course. In that case, I would like to drive the first bulldozer through the front of the building. You want to drive the bulldozer? That's right. Through the front wall. OK. Well, then I guess we have a deal. Can I just come and watch? Well, and that's not going to be suspicious. You sitting in a corner of the room staring. I think not, Alfred. Could be your assistant. You're 11. Could make the tea. Look, just sit tight here with Albert, just in case we need you, yeah? Boring. You're nearly done. Yeah, good as. You missed the sea off a choir. Yeah? A choir. There's a sea in it. Thank you. Hello? Hello, yes, it's uh, Terry Harper here from TGP Properties. Yes, we're looking to hire a new firm of consultants and I'd like to set up a meeting with David Tripp to discuss it. Hey, here's one for you. How many Spaniards does it take to change a light bulb? Juan. Hey, you, I'm doing a punchline. He's all yours, Eddie. Sounds expensive. We'll cover your losses. You gonna stay for a quick one? And I gotta get back. We're coming for him later. Now you, you be good, pandito. Huh? Okay. Bye, Albert. Bye. Wanna play a game, Eddie? <laughs> Seeing as how they're paying, yeah, whatever you want. What about find a father? Never heard of that one. It's easy. Just close your eyes, count to say... 200, I'll hide. Once you get to 200, open your eyes. Try and find me. That's hide and seek. Yeah, but if you find me, I have to give you a fiver. Like the sound of that. Go on, turn around. Close your eyes. Start counting. One, two. No three, peeking. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Just off for my 10 30. It's me. He's just left. Okay, we're all set here. Hello. I have a meeting with a few colleagues, but they're going to be late. Is it all right if I wait over there until we're all here? Hello. Terry Harper, TGP Properties. I've got an appointment to see David Tripp. Oh, he's just left, I'm afraid. Oh, hell. Mix up with my new assistant. No problem. I'll give him a call. Hello, David. Yes, yeah, Terry Harper. Bit of a mix-up, I'm afraid. Yeah, I'm at your office. 
Yes, I know. All right, see you in a minute. He won't be long. Uh, he's set for me to wait for him in the meeting room. Certainly. It's just here. Can I get you a drink? No, no, no. I'm fine, thanks. Uh, two of my colleagues will be arriving shortly, uh, Mr Ridley and Associates. Uh, they'll ask for me. Just uh, show them right in, would you? Of course. It's this way. Trip. Mr. Did Tripp. You... Hello, I'm Louise. I'm Terry's assistant. Oh, hi. Terry's stuck in traffic. I'm afraid he'll be here any minute now, but um, the meeting room is still being used. So he's asked me to go over the background of the company while we wait. Sure, Please no problem. Take a seat. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> oh. Oh. Right, thank there you. you Lovely. Just take a seat. Certainly, thank you. Oh. That's just a little bit of what we're about. Splendid. <laughs> Dear Ridley, to see Teddy Harper. If you'd like to follow me, please. Hundred ninety-eight, hundred ninety-nine, two hundred. Gentlemen, welcome. <clears throat> I'm Terry Harper. Pleased to meet you. Please. As I'm sure you know, we've been appointed by the vendors to handle the sale of the London City Studios, and it's my job to oversee the sealed bid process. Now, look, I'm a bit pushed for time, so let's get straight on with it, shall we? Yeah. Sure. Clearly, the key selling point is the location. The studios are right in the heart of the West End, making it perfect for a luxury hotel, shopping centre, offices, or even luxury apartments. How many bids have you had? I can't discuss details of the bids, I'm afraid, but I'm sure you can imagine there's been considerable interest in the site. And I can tell you that your party is the final bid. We're closing the process in just over two hours. I see. Now, I must point out, Teddy, that we are determined to win this bid. I am personally prepared to pay whatever it takes to ensure we do. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. I want that sight, Terry. Well, in that case, it would be a shame if you didn't get it. Mm. The person you are calling is unable to take your call. Please leave a message after the tone. David, it's Kate. They're all in the boardroom waiting for you. Now, let's suppose, hypothetically speaking, that I write 100 million here. How would that sound? Well, that sounds like a winning bid, hypothetically speaking. And what should I allow for extras? You know, the uh, additional costs to ensure the deal is done. Well, I usually advise 1% cash, which would make it, let me see, um, oh, a nice round million. I hate to spend more than I have to on extras. I was thinking, 250. Oh, look, is that the time? Fine. 500,000. Oh, I think we can probably work with that. We specialise in uh, medium-sized city centre commercial properties, mainly office blocks, but we also have a portfolio of, uh, of retail units. Excuse me for just one second. Yes, sir. What do you think you're doing here? Me, you said I could help. I haven't done anything interesting yet. We're right in the middle of the comp. 
Oh, no, that's blown it. That's not the man from Einstein and the Roo, is it? Yes, it is, and now he knows he's supposed to be there and not here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll go on and clash. No, don't you dare. You're going to go straight back to Eddie's bar and you're going to wait there. OK, I'll be right back. Is everything all right? Well, it looks like there's been a mix-up. Mr Harper's waiting for me at our offices. Oh, all right. Well, if I call him and just get him to come back here, I think no, that's probably... No, it's fine. Easy. No, I really... I... I'll take a cab. Excellent. Excuse me. I must take this. Yes? Well, I am rather busy at the moment. Not half as busy as you will be in about two minutes' time. It's a long story, but Trip's on his way back to you. Oh, dear. Right, well, thanks for that. Problem? No, no, nothing serious. But I'm afraid we will have to wrap this up shortly. But before we do, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Ding, dong, that's my song, yes? Yes, that's me. I knew I recognised you. Long time ago. Yes, it was, but it was a great show, though. Thank you. Don't think it'd be a problem, do you? You know, my uh, history with London City Studios. History? What history? Exactly. You see, the bottom line is, they don't need to know who the principal players are behind the winning bid. Unless you're a Yank. <laughs> God forbid! Please. <laughs> uh... Excellent, excellent. Uh, sorry not to have longer. Busy day, I'm afraid. I trust we'll speak again very soon. You can count on it. Mr. Hopper. David Tripp. Ah, David. Uh, just excuse me for two minutes, would you? I need the loo. How quickly can you get your hands on that half a million? I'll call the bank. A couple of hours easy. Just check again. Mm -hmm. His name's Terry Harper. Mm -hmm. He's definitely here. This is Weinstein the Beer. Come and he's come visiting. On. No, you're going to have to leave. Look, there's no one here by that name. Yeah, I had to cut things short, but I don't think you suspected anything. In fact, I'm certain he's on board. OK, OK. Well done. Uh, you meet us back at Eddie's? No, I'm heading back to the hotel to wait for Ridley's call. I'll see you later. All right, mate. Cheers. Are you sure it was the same kid? 100%. Well, maybe it's just a coincidence. He was there looking for Terry Harper. But when I saw the kid at the hotel, he was with Strickland. That's more than a coincidence. No, that is a bit odd. Plus, he was saying to that security guard that Terry Harper was a visitor. But he isn't. He works there. Exactly. <laughs> Boss, what are you saying? I don't know. But something definitely is not right. So where have you been? I told you to come straight back here. I, uh, got lost. Oh. Right, well, I thought we agreed. You promised me you'd be good. I wondered why you'd asked me to count all the way to 200. Oh, don't tell me you got you to play hide-and-seek. But what is it with you, look? He's very persuasive. It's the eyes. Yes, it's definitely the eyes. Well, either that or you two are unbelievably gullible. Yeah. <laughs> right, come on, drink up. You all right? Can I talk to you? Yeah, sure. Alone. Really just saw me at the offices you were at. What, Weinstein de Vere? What were you doing there? I came to warn you about the other man that he was coming back. And did Ridley recognise you from the hotel? Don't worry, Sam, I'm also wet. I think it went pretty well. But I don't think we should risk leaving the outcome to chance. What do you mean? 
It's my secret weapon. I always know who's open to a little financial incentive and who isn't. Are you suggesting we pay a bribe? Oh, come on, Mr. Strickland. We're both grown-up businessmen. That's the way it sometimes happens. We are a billion-dollar-a-year business with a reputation to protect. We can't be seen to be involved in anything like that. You wouldn't have to. We'd do it. And what if Harper squeals? Well, your name's not on the big document. You've got complete deniability. All right, just do it then. I think it's only fair that we each put up half the cash. Why? Well, because if anything goes wrong, then we both share the hit. How much are we talking? Man like Harper? Mm. 500,000 should do it. And you're suggesting I go and find 250,000 pounds in cash like that? Well, you're a billion dollar a year company. That's just loose change. So, what are his options? Well, he could walk away. But he won't, will he? Not Ridley. Now, he's asking us to put up half the money so it looks like he's going to go through with the bribe. Mm. But he'll keep it. Mm. Exactly. So, how do we get it back? OK, so we're 43 short. Any ideas? Yeah, I can probably imagine that. How? Ask no questions, I'll tell you no lies. Oh, no, you don't. What? I know what you're thinking. No, you don't. What's she on about? I've no idea. You promise. <laughs> Wretch. Oh, that's all right. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's you. Yeah, well, nice to see you too, Wretch. Well, come in then. Thank you, Rich. <clears throat> That's 50p. What? 50p for the tea. You want cake? Got cake. No, no, you're all right, mate. There you go, 50p. Thank you. <sighs> so, how much do you want? 80 grand. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no, I can't do 80 grand, I can't. No? Right, what about 43, then? Can you do that? Yes, I can do 43. <laughs> 10, 20, 30, 40. 41, 42, 43. So, how long do you want it for? Oh, uh, a couple of days should do, Rich. Oh, well, that's going to cost you. How much? Well, the usual. What, 2% a day? Yeah, plus the other thing. Um, what other things are there, Rich? Well, you know, the other thing with the girl. Emma. Her problem? No, it's not a problem, Rich. She loves doing it with you. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. That's good. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a spy movie. It's just boring old business. Maybe for you, but this is not how I do business. Well, it is now. Mind if I have a look? Not if you don't. Be my guest. You think this is going to work? Oh, I'm sure of it. I'll ring you when it's done. He's on his way. So how'd it go? Like a dream.
can't kid a kid, eh? Was she a genius? This is sweet. Hello? Hello, love. Um, there's a policeman on their way up to see you. There's police on their way up here. Police? Why? Hey. Are we in trouble? Why are the police here? How would I know? Sarah on reception again. Oh, I know. I'm sorry, it's my mistake. The police are actually asking if you and your colleague can come downstairs and talk to them. They say it won't take long. Fine. They want to stand stairs, eh? Us? Yes. Us. I'm oh, Ridley. Where are they? Sorry, Mr. Ridley, who? The policeman. Sorry, which policeman? Where's Sarah? We don't have a Sarah here. I've just spoken to her. What's going on? Where's the money? They've nicked it. Mr. Ridley, can I help? Damn right you can. I've been robbed. A receptionist called Sarah rang me and said that there were police officers coming up to see me. We don't have anyone called Sarah. So you said. Then she rang me again and asked me to go downstairs to meet them. I went downstairs and there were no police officers. We were out of this room for five minutes and someone stole cash from that safe. But Mr Ridley, there are absolutely no signs of forced entry. And as I showed you downstairs, the CCTV footage only shows you and your colleague entering this room once. Your camera only shows us going to the room after we came back from reception. We were in the room before that as well. Not according to the footage. And neither was anyone else. So, how are you suggesting they got in? I don't know. Through the door. Oh, don't tell me you got you to play hide and seek. But what is it with you, Lou? He's very persuasive. It's the eyes. Yes, it's definitely the eyes. Well, either that or you two are unbelievably gullible. Yeah. <laughs> And did Ridley recognise you from the hotel? Don't worry, Sam also went. So, what are his options? Well, he could walk away. But he won't, will he? Not Ridley. Now, he's asking us to put up half the money, so it looks like he's going to go through with the bribe. Mm. But he'll keep it. Exactly. So, how do we get it back? Alfie, you're a bloody genius. All right, so we know that Ridley's on this floor, yeah? Yeah. OK. Excuse me, could you tell me if Suite 532 or 732 are available? I'd like to upgrade. Sean, you'll need to access the hotel lift. Make sure Ridley goes to the fifth floor. So how'd it go? Like a dream. We'll need to send Ridley to room 532, but he'll think it's room 632. Mickey, make sure you swap Ridley's key card.
You think this is gonna work? Oh, I'm sure of it. Hello, Mr. Ridley. It's um, Sarah on reception here. Um, there's some policemen on their way up to see you. Police? Why? Are we in trouble? Why are the police here? How would I know? I'm Ridley. Where are they? Sorry, Mr. Ridley. Who? The policemen. Where's the money? They've nicked it. your glasses. I give you the great British game show. Ding dong, that's my song! <laughs> we went up in the lift to the sixth floor and then we walked to the suite. Then why didn't the CCTV see us? Maybe they mess with the cameras. Hey, what if the manager's in on it? <laughs> this is too my head then, boss. Seriously, I give in. That's easy for you to say. You haven't lost 250 grand to a bunch of con men. Ding dong, that's my song. Peace off! You did good, kid. Actually, you were a complete liability. But at least it was never boring. <laughs> now nah, you're gonna be great, son. Cheers. Loved every minute of it. I'm meeting you on Clash. You know, properly. I'm really gonna miss you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, me too, kid. Ash, phone for you. It's Beezer. Well, well, well. If it isn't the bloke who's going to be picking up the tab down here for the next year. <laughs> yeah, all right, how's it going? Yeah. You what? Uh, yeah, well, you know, I can, uh, I can only ask him. Yeah, all right, tell her. He, uh, he says he's stuck in Berlin and uh, wondered if we could have Alfie for another couple of weeks. Well, I, yeah, sure, fine. No, I'm just kidding, he's in the cab of here in five. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, where's Emma? Oh, uh, she's taking one for the team. a kid, you know? Yeah, me too. Well, I think one fresh-faced kid on the team is enough. 
Oh, thanks, Albert. So how exactly did he manage to lose you, Emma? We're five grand short. Don't change the subject. No, I'm serious. I counted this three times and we're two bundles short. Maybe Ridley miscounted it. I mean, he did think he was going to get it all back after all. No, he wouldn't have taken the risk. I mean, I could have asked to count it at the handover. Let's check the case. No, nothing there. Have you got any idea, Ash? Tell you what, if I can trick you out of some of the money you make from the con, can I keep it? Hang on, hang on, let me get this straight. If you can trick me out of some of the money, assuming we get it, that is, I'll let you keep it. Deal? <laughs> yeah, all right, deal. I'm really going to miss you. Yeah, me too, kid. <laughs> nah. Nah, it's a mystery to me.